Murray Avenue artists. Today in this quarantine art club video, I'm gonna go over with you how to take sharper photos of your artwork and just of everything around you in general. No fancy camera, no problem. I'm gonna go over how we're gonna take photos with our smartphones and our Chromebooks and how to edit them to enhance them even more. So let's start with taking photos of our artwork. A lot of the times we're taking photos of our artwork to turn it in to Google Classroom to submit along with an assignment. Other reasons artists take photos of their artwork are to document their artwork as well as document their progress. And this allows you to build a digital portfolio. Having your artwork documented online is really helpful in the future when you're submitting your artwork to art schools or to art positions that you need to have an art background and a portfolio for. So it's really important that we're using our cameras to document the before process, the middle process, and the end result of our artwork. All right, let's go over what not to do when taking a picture on our Chromebook. Too far away, too close, my hands are covering it. I'm taking a picture in front of a mirror, or sorry, I'm taking a picture in front of a window, and now it's really dark. Let's try to avoid these things. What can we do instead? All right, so let's think about ways we could take photos with our Chromebook. So if I have my artwork, I wanna try not to tilt it back too far, tilt it up too close. Um, I wanna really try to balance it. So I really wanna use my fingers to really balance my artwork and just kind of use the rest of my body to balance it off. Um, try not to hold it as much, just really let it sit on your um, hand or hands, however you wanna do it. Turn it, and then you want to snap your shot. They called Pixlr X, and I clicked Add Image and Browse to get the photograph from my webcam. The first thing you want to do is come up to Crop, so it's this button here, and we want to straighten it after we take our webcam photo. After we do that, we want to crop it. So I would say this is okay, but my fingers are still in it and that's not essentially the goal. So this is a little bit better of an example because um, I can still straighten it. Oops, I can rotate it. And I can crop it. So I can do all the things I want and I can really get my finger out of this picture and everything in my background. So this one's a little bit better, um, even though it's not as straight, there's still no fingers that are taking away from this photograph. Next, let's talk about taking artworks using our smartphones. So I'm gonna take a picture of the same artwork, but I'm gonna go over some tips of how to document artwork using your cell phone. Um, one thing I do wanna just suggest is downloading the Google Drive app for your phone can be really helpful when you're taking photos and you need to use them for assignments in class because you can take photos with your phone and just put them right to your drive. All right, so you see I'm standing in front of the window. They're building a house next door. It's a little loud, um, so I apologize for that. But you can't really see me because I'm next to a window because this is absorbing all the light. But this means that this is a great spot to take a picture as long as your camera is not facing this way. Instead, it should be facing this way. Um, that being said, when you're taking a picture with your phone, with your, of your artwork, I'm taking it next to my window. If I am turning away from the window and I have my artwork right here and I'm taking a photo of it, um, it's coming out super bright because the light behind me is now lighting up this photograph and it's giving me a beautiful and actual light that is super, super strong when taking a photograph. And this is how that one came out. Another suggestion I have too is take your photo down. So sometimes it does really work to have your artwork maybe displayed on something. Let's just pretend this is a wall and a gallery and I'm taking my photo on my phone with it straight on. That's fine. But taking a photo of something maybe on the ground is also helpful because you have control to kind of sturdy your phone. So you can kind of make sure if you look up high enough, is it straight? Am I holding my hand straight? Um, you know, the way you hold it, I know it sounds a little silly, but 
if you turn more towards one side or the other, your photo is going to be wonky. It's not going to be realistic. So if you practice taking photos down, it's a lot better to just balance and keep it flat and have an even photograph. Okay, so I have my photo down, like I suggested, is putting something down so the ground always works. And zooming into your photo is also super helpful because um, it allows you to really kind of get that cropping effect before you actually edit it and crop it. So I'm zooming in before I snap my shot and snap. And let's edit it now. Go to edit and you wanna use the crop and rotation tool. So again, this is the same thing I showed you on the other website. Um, I'm just cropping things um, to fit, to get the main idea. And I could use the straighten tool if it's a little bit wonky. So now that I showed you these tips on how to take better photos of your artwork, I want you to use these same exact tips to take photos of anything else, whether that be of a person or of your surroundings, of a landscape. I want you to practice those tools. Using a crop effect after you take a picture always can make a stronger image because you're intentionally editing the angles in the photo and just the composition, which is the overall layout. So it's really good to go back in your photo when you're done and just kind of trim it up and crop it. Another really important thing is what's in our background. If we're trying to photograph something that's the main point, we don't want too much in the background. Or if the background has a lot of stuff on one side and is really blank on the other, that's not going to be balanced. It's not going to be even. Another photography tip I have is the best time to take photographs is something called golden hour. And that's usually when it's sunrise or sunset. Um, during that time, because the sun is you know either here or here, it's not above us all day, it casts super, super long shadows. And those long shadows can make for some really, really dramatic shots if you want to take very you know dramatic types of photographs. Um, I would suggest chat testing out your photography skills during golden hour. Um, and then like that last little thing I want to say is never take a picture like this in front of your window because that's just going to really kind of mess up all of the colors and all of the light. So it is best to have things be backlit. That means the light comes from behind the camera and then on to you. So any other photography tips I'm happy to share. Um, and after you watch this quarantine art club video, um, I challenge you to go either outside or maybe somewhere inside your house. And I want you to take a photograph of something around you using one new technique you learned today.